Live from New York City, it's theCUBE. Covering Lenovo Transform 2017. Brought to you by Lenovo. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of the Lenovo Transform event. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Stu Miniman, who is a senior analyst at Wikibon. We are joined by Kirk Skaugen. He is the executive vice president and president of Lenovo Data Group. Welcome right. back to theCUBE, Kirk. You're yeah. a veteran. Yeah, we're doing this on a monthly basis. It's great. <laughs> So you're fresh off the keynote. Um, the theme of this conference is transform. Lenovo has undergone a massive transformation over in recent years. What is your focus and where do you see sort of the, the biggest points of, of change in the company? Yeah, well I think we're sort of celebrating today this, this transformation to the next phase of our growth. Uh, if you think about us as a company, we've kind of acquired the x86 business, uh, server business from IBM a few years ago, and we are also building off more than a decade of our China heritage for the Think Server business. So that's combining the two together, kind of driving to our next phase of growth. Uh, the whole purpose of today is really transforming the customer experience and starting with the customer first. Uh, we're incredibly proud that we just got ranked number one in customer satisfaction again but we're not kind of stopping there. We're going to use this announcement today to kind of catapult us ahead. You, customer service has, has always been a strength of Lenovo, and as you said, you're, you're going to continue to drive toward that. You said uh, in the keynote that you're incentivizing employees around customer service. Can you talk a little bit about how you plan on maintaining the edge? Yeah, so this year, uh, every Lenovo employee is getting incentivized on customer experience, so we're making them take kind of a personal goal of how they can better improve the, the customer, regardless of whether you're an engineer or you're in phone support or, or these kind of things. So it really starts at the grassroots level. It gets everybody thinking customer first, which is great. And uh, you know, again, we're excited because we're in 21 of the 22 categories, number one in x86 servers, but we're constantly learning and wanting to improve, and, and that's where we're starting. Kirk, YY in his keynote talked about just the, the, the pace of change, said that, if we, you know, forget about 18 years ago, 18 months ago we co probably couldn't predict how fast things are going. How does that drive your strategy, how you work with customers and drive the product line? Yeah, so I think customers are asking for simplicity. It's getting so complex and the rate of change is so much. So when we did this design of both our server storage and networking, we're, we're kind of future-proofing it. So we actually are dramatically reducing the number of products, but building them to be more flexible, so you can qualify less solutions, but have them live longer in your data center. Uh, and that, that's been a key attribute as we look at kind of future-proofing. Uh, also, as we move to software-defined, that's going to be a, a key element as well, because people aren't looking to change out the hardware as much as they are the software part. So, you know, everything from our configuration managers to our uh, system hardware management, and with XClarity, the whole design experience, we're changing to simplify the experience for the customer, because the change is just almost getting to a point that's too much for people to, to handle from a technology transformation perspective. Right. You're celebrating 25 years of, of, of the x86 server uh, that you're offering. So explain to us the, the new branding. Uh, you've got two new brands that you announced today. Uh, kind of thinking behind that and walk us through what they are. Sure, so today we're announcing uh, Think System and Think Agile. So on the server side, uh, we had both the Think Server brand from Lenovo and then the System X brand from IBM. We're building those two together. The engineers were kind of given the charter years ago to say, how do you stay number one in reliability, number one in customer satisfaction, and then we have a legacy of now of over 150 world record benchmarks. So it's a, it's a, a brand that's highly flexible, premium, and it's going to span now not only our server products, but server, storage, and networking. Uh, one of the surprises I had joining Lenovo is just we have hundreds of engineers in networking that the old IBM had acquired from companies like Blade Network Technologies, and now things like hyper-converged uh, storage, once you've solved the storage compute integration, networking becomes the next bottleneck. And so the, the products we're announcing today on Think Agile, which is our software-defined products, are helping solve not only the hyper-converged storage problems, but also some of the challenges that that brings to networking and, and moving traffic from a traditional you know, north-south architecture to east-west. So simply put, Think System for network storage and uh, server, and Think Agile for software defined. Uh, on the Think Agile, the, the two uh, partners that I saw highlighted up on screen were Nutanix, which you've had in OEM for a while, and the, the Microsoft Azure with Azure Stack we know is coming this, late, this year. Both of those companies have a lot of partners why, why is Lenovo positioned 
uh, to, to be a, a strong contender in, in, with both of those uh, partners. Well, I think when we talk to CIOs, what we're hearing pretty constantly is that Lenovo's lack of legacy. You know, we don't have a huge legacy router business or a huge legacy SAN business and all the associated costs and services. So we see uh, our competitors sometimes up pushing one more generation of legacy technology, and so we feel like uh, we're getting pulled in to kind of leap ahead, not being encumbered by the past. And then I always say, it's, you know, little things don't mean a lot, little things mean everything. So it's the thousands of Lenovo engineers that are tuning uh, this for, uh, for both of those solutions, especially with Nutanix, we've got integrated networking now in the stack. So we're not just solving the storage problem, but we're addressing that network solution as well. Uh, but there's a reason why we have 150 world record benchmarks, is that fine tuning with our partners to get the last you know, few bits of performance out of the systems. I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about this lack of legacy, as well as the cost efficiencies you referenced in the keynote, in terms of having everything in China, and, and, and you described going left to, <laughs> to, to make the servers and going right to make the, the, the PCs. Can you talk a little bit about how that, that helps Lenovo uh, Im improve its offerings? Yeah, so I think you know, we have the benefits of being kind of an autonomous data center group and making our own decisions, but we're taking care of the manufacturing, taking advantage of the manufacturing capability of Lenovo. So if you look at the devices side, uh, Lenovo's building about four devices a second. And on the server side, we build a little bit over 100 servers an hour. But if you go into, for example, uh, we have factories in Savor, Hungary, uh, Monterey, Mexico, North Carolina, uh, and even Shenzhen, if you go into our Shenzhen factory, the parts warehouse is common on the first floor. It comes up through the second floor and actually goes left for notebooks, right for servers. So all that vendor managed inventory, we're taking advantage of that scale of four devices a second and we get that advantage, unlike some of our competitors. Uh, what that really means to our customers is we can compete with the best commodity costs and the best manufacturing costs in the industry. I mean, some of our Third party analysts are saying we have manufacturing rates that could be almost half of our competition because some of the scale uh, that we have. Yeah, Kirk, one of the things that caught my attention in the keynote was talking about using the intelligence and inside your supply chain uh, through the whole kind of life cycle of the products. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a little bit of insight as to how you're using it internally and you know what, what customers see from that? Yeah, so uh, we just hired our chief technology officer, was Dr. Ray Yong, who's uh, ex-Microsoft. He's one of the world leaders in artificial intelligence and our CIO and, and, and us in the data center group, we've all been collaborating to bring artificial intelligence deeper into everything we do, but even from our supply chain to our order delivery, um, which is why I think our customer satisfaction rates are so high, because we can predict the supply chain, the right amount of inventory, and then shipping it all the way through and predicting the dock date to our customers incredibly well. Um, but, you know, one of the key learnings we had, I think, over the last couple of years of, of acquiring the IBM X86 server business, it took us almost two years to get off the IT systems, right? We had over 40 different databases that we had to integrate in, and now that, as of January 1, they've all become part of Lenovo, pulling those big data analytics together and using artificial intelligence, we can now track um, the aged population of all of the installed base of over about two and a half million servers that we have out there, who's coming up for warranty replacements, who's coming up for hardware replacements, and that's almost that predictive analytics that customers are, are really valuing. In terms of, in terms of uh, Lenovo and its, and its aspirations for the future in terms of becoming the world's biggest supercomputing company, you mm -hmm. are the fastest growing, but let's talk about impact, and this is something that YY talked about in his keynote, and really making sure that Lenovo is working not just about, not just helping companies sell more widgets, but also with scientific breakthroughs, curing diseases, uh, predicting the effect of climate change. How, how big a part is that uh, of your job? Yeah, well I think, I think it's something that's incredibly motivating to Lenovo employees, right? Beyond financial return to shareholders is every day I get internal texts or WeChats from Lenovo employees that are feeling really proud to be part of a company that's off trying to do something good for humanity uh, as well. I mean, on the PC side, I think we're selling Chromebooks and bridging the digital divide between kids in Africa and kids in the major metropolitan areas of the world. But on the data center side, you know, things like we did with the Barcelona supercomputer, where we now have the, the fastest next generation Intel computer on the planet, it is one of the breakthroughs uh, predicting weather and climate change, predicting and, and tracking the next tsunami to evacuate coastlines faster, trying to find cures to some of the most terrible diseases on Earth. So it's a huge part of uh, 
of, I think, the culture of trying to do good for the world, not just uh, make a financial return. So, Kirk, I want to go back to Think Agile for a second because you, you dropped a hint that we, we couldn't let pass. Uh, <laughs> it said that it, it's likely that we can, should expect M&A uh, from Lenovo here. Now, I don't expect you to tell us who you're looking at, but what do you look for? Uh, what type of company to look for? What would fit well into the Lenovo portfolio? Well, it's funny because uh, we're Lenovo, so we're not Huawei or Cisco or EMC, right? Big names, what I would say, in traditional networking and, and uh, storage. So all of these startups out there that are you know, essentially competing with those large legacy companies are coming to us saying, hey, we want either access to China, given our strong China presence, but also global scale. Because once they get to a couple hundred million dollars in revenue, they have a real tough time scaling. And, and as I said, we're participating now in over 160 countries, 50 call centers. That's pretty big investment, even for some of the fastest growing software-defined companies in the world to, to set up. So. I think uh, you know we want to build our own internal intellectual property, but we're also going to look at joint ventures and M&As in the areas of software-defined networking, software-defined storage, because our customers again see us with that lack of legacy and are really pushing us, you know, to go even faster, which is great. So those are the businesses you're interested in, but how, what are the kind of cultures you're looking for, particularly because culture is such an important part of Lenovo. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, one of the reasons I moved from Intel to Lenovo is this, they're just fierceless innovators, right? And and we became number one in PC through innovation, not just cost cutting. And I, I see that on the data center side as well. Um, all of those little things that matter. So I think we want to have people who uh, have the highest of aspirations, right? When we go into something, we want to be number one in it. Um, people who are fearless, that aren't afraid of companies that might be three or four times our size. Um, but that want to make a global impact. So a lot of these customers, they've already made their, you know, maybe their, their financial returns in a previous startup, uh, and now they're looking at how they can go you know, change the world. And, and the scale that Lenovo brings, I think is something that's pretty exciting to them. All right. Kirk, on, on the Intel point, I think this is the fourth show that we've done the Cube at this year where Intel's been up on stage, arm in arm with a partner in the cloud space and the server space, talking about that next generation chipset. What's going to set Lenovo apart with, with this next wave, and what are your customers excited about for this next spin of the Intel chipset? Yeah, so I think you know we're seeing uh, you know 59% performance improvement on things like SAP HANA, where we're number one in the world in installations. We're seeing better total cost of ownership reductions. So particularly in hyperscale and HPC, I mean we see a step function transition over almost immediately on the new Intel chips. Um, and you know, we're looking at all architectures, of course, of course, as well, but I think with Intel, we put in the largest OmniPath solutions on the planet. With Barcelona Supercomputer, we're working not just on the processors, but on their SSDs, on their, um, you know, their accelerator Xeon Phi technology, on the fabrics. So we have a really tight uh, innovation relationship with them, so we're selling probably more content per box, and so therefore we're obviously able to fine tune the entire portfolio together with them. Um, but I think customers are excited about you know, us continuing this world record performance that we've had, the, the TCO reductions of getting to lower power. Most of these supercomputers are still constrained by power. So we have more than 25 patents now in water cooling technology to try to you know, be greener for the earth. Um, so, so I think those are some of the things that we're seeing from Intel. Those are the selling points. Yeah, I mean, higher performance, we have a very tight, close relationship, so there's not a lot of finger pointing. If we get into an issue, um, as all companies do, right, we can solve it very, very quickly, and, and I think, uh, again, being number one in customer satisfaction from a third party is, is our testament to that. Kirk. Kirk, this last question I had sure. the, the, uh, on that, the, the hyperscale market, could you just give us the update as kind of Lenovo's position there? He heard a lot about the, the HPC market, we know kind of the traditional enterprise market, but hyperscale I think is one of the areas you differentiate yourself. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we obviously sell to Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent as part of China. Um, we're one of their largest suppliers uh, and partners, and we're now expanding through this new segment focus into the west coast of the United States. So, uh, you know, we, we, we don't necessarily go out and say the names of those customers, but there are multiple hyperscale customers in the top 10, many of which are based in the US, that we are already now shipping into significantly more units this year than last year. 
And it's a function of really getting cost optimized. Again, we're taking advantage of PC economics and bringing them to hyperscale compute, so we're not afraid of low margin, high volume business, because that's what you know, we're, we're, we're doing in the PC space every day. Um, so we're going to continue to expand, not just in the top tier ones, but also move into the tier two, tier three kind of customer base as well. So we're expanding that sales force, looking at it end to end, only burdening it with what it needs to be burdened with, right, relative to the cost structure, so that we can compete with uh, the best, most cost effective companies in the world and still make a, a little bit of money for Lenovo shareholders. So. <laughs> Kirk, thanks so much for joining us. It's been, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Yeah, it's ex the excitement around here is great, so we appreciate you guys coming and appreciate the time. Great. I'm Rebecca Knight for Stu Miniman. We'll be back with more of Lenovo Transform after this.